Uh, hi, I'm Karen Murray. I'm an instructor here at the Art Department at Valdosta State University. Uh, I teach uh, art appreciation, drawing, design, and I'm also, I also serve as gallery director here for our university gallery, which has been a real exciting year for me because this is my first year. And uh, it, this has also been a real memorable senior exhibition for me since this is my first exhibit here at BSU. We had a really large group of students. Uh, we had 18 seniors that uh, senior studio seniors are required to exhibit their work as part of their finishing program. And what the senior exhibition course entails is all aspects of uh, really conducting an exhibition. So the students were instrumental in the planning stages all the way from preparation and presentation of their work, as well as uh, designing brochures, catalog, invitations, and the reception. So it, it's been a real learning um, endeavor and venture for them. And it's been exciting to really work with this larger group. This is my first time to work with this many seniors at a time. So we've had our ups and downs, but it's been exciting. And I think that there's a lot of hard work that really reveals itself in our exhibition in the two-dimensional as well as the three-dimensional work. And a lot of the work is really mature, exciting work that I feel our seniors are really going to have a good future with in graphic design as well as sculpture, ceramic, painting. Uh, we also have art education majors that are required to exhibit. And it's been real exciting for them to get an opportunity to show their work. It, um, the exhibit runs on the average of about two weeks. It gives the students here at BSU as well as the community and family members from out of town to have an opportunity to come and see what our art students are doing. And uh, they have been instrumental in that phase as well. We have special tours that are conducted during the day as well as evenings that the students themselves actually help and assist in that. One slight difference here from the other senior exhibitions that I've personally been involved in elsewhere before I came here is that the seniors had uh, the uh, burden of selecting. So there is a big difference when it comes to who selects the work here, who edits their final work. The senior student here, they submit X number of works to be entered and possibly to be selected for the exhibition. And then there is a senior exhibition committee that uh, really is part of the faculty. It's a committee that has been selected from the faculty. And they then choose the mature works and the quality works out of what they feel is the student's strongest representation. A student themselves doesn't always feel that that's their strongest, but you know we're looking at it from one point of view, a student's looking at it from another point of view. So there's sometimes a, a sort of a mixed emotion in, and students and faculty don't always agree with that. However, I think overall we have a very, very strong exhibition. It, uh, it's something that they should be entire, you know, really, really immensely proud of. And I think it, our faculty as a whole is very proud of this because that last quarter, everything comes together. It all just sort of culminates in one final phase and students, as well as instructors and faculty can say, hey, you know, these are our students that have done this. They've created this work. And it's exciting for us as well, you know, to see it all presented in a nice professional way rather than just being leaning up against the studio space somewhere or being tucked away in a drawer or a file cabinet. Um, so it, it's, it's a good feeling to see that how hard the students have worked towards this one common goal that they're all sharing at this moment. And of course, the students are gonna go all different directions. As I mentioned, we've got art education, we have graphic designers, and we have fine art majors. And it's going to be really, you know, 
uh, interesting to see what direction they choose a couple of years from now. Officer, it's my license and registration. Cheeseburger? It's hot out today, huh, officer? Maybe my tail lights out. Shouldn't or... you be carpooling? I guess you're right. I guess I am. Carpooling can save up to 600,000 gallons of gas a year. This message sponsored by Ad Council and Earthshare. It's only a little motor oil. What difference is one drop of paint going to make? This much fertilizer isn't going to pollute anything. You're looking at a sea of excuses, created drop by drop by people like you and me. Our waters can be saved if each of us does their part. Drop by drop. If we all do a little, we can do a lot. Brought to you by the Natural Resources Defense Council, the EPA, and the Ad Councils of the U.S. and Japan. Hi, I'm Kelly Denton. I'm a senior here at VSU. I'm going to talk to you about my artwork that's in the senior show. Um, the piece that's in the catalog is an example of just a quick study that I did that turned out well. A lot of pieces that you do when you're an artist, you work on a lot of things. Some things turn out great, but about only 10% or anything you'd even consider keeping. This is one of those that was among the 10%. It's a, called Studio Essentials, and it has paint cans and a coffee cup in the front, and it's done in mixed media. There's ink wash, watercolor, and acrylic in the piece. And I was happy that it turned out I didn't take time to go back and pick on it and try to fix it. I just left it the way it was. And I seem to be happier with my artwork when I do it very quickly and real spontaneously. There's another piece in there, a, sheep, a drawing of sheep that I did. I was driving down the road and I saw these sheep in the field. And I had, all I had in the car to draw with was some charcoal and Conti so, and a roll of masking tape and some brown paper where I had just sent a package at the post office. So I stopped and pulled off the side of the road and taped the paper to the top of my car and just drew the sheep that were in the field. And I was very happy with the way I did four drawings and one of them is in the senior show this year. I was very happy with the way they turned out. They're just very spontaneous, quick, scribbled drawings. Um, the other piece that's in the senior show is my self-portrait. It's the first time I've ever tried to paint any person, much less myself. And I had a good time doing that. I learned a lot about flesh tones, a lot about how to put perspective on a body in a piece. And um, most, I like working with paints and drawing. I think I enjoy drawing a little more. I'm just now starting to paint with oils more. I, I like the quickness of the drawing I can produce something in it, but I think that eventually my painting style will be one where I paint very quickly, that I get it all on, say this is enough, and go on to the next piece. I think that I also like to do ceramics, and this department is very well rounded, and it's a good, good program because you can take a little bit of everything, in fact you're required to take a little of everything, and it's good because you get a well rounded art education here. The senior show shows that. It shows what a well-rounded education we're getting because there's quite a few different things and there's not one set style. You have all the different professors have different styles. You get a lot of different input. So you have a, a real chance to develop your unique style while you're here at school. And I think that's one of the real assets of this art college. difference is one drop of paint going to make? This much fertilizer isn't going to pollute anything. You're looking at a sea of excuses, created drop by drop by people like you and me. Our waters can be saved if each of us does their part. Drop by drop. If we all do a little, 
We can do a lot. Brought to you by the Natural Resources Defense Council, the EPA, and the Ad Councils of the U.S. and Japan. They've given our generation a label. X. Generation nothing. They say we have no sense of purpose. They say we have no war to fight and no cause to believe in. Who are they? Join the thousands of us who are making a difference and wear a label that does mean something. Hi, I'm Steve Powell. I'm here to talk about my senior uh, uh, artwork that I have in the uh, senior exhibition uh, this year. Uh, my favorite piece is uh, probably a combination of uh, computer graphics and painting. Uh, I really enjoy painting because I, I just uh, enjoy the process of putting a mark on a, you know, a flat surface. But I also like a computer graphics because the diversity of the, uh, the technology that has advanced so much that you know you can uh, make a mistake and go back and uh, recover what you lost. Uh, but uh, all in all, I think the experience I've had at uh, VSU has been a very uh, growth experience since I. Uh, in high school, I wasn't too uh, uh, concerned about doing schoolwork or uh, doing artwork. And uh, I think I really uh, had a good foundation to go out and, and find a job in doing uh, computer graphics. Uh, that's what I, my career goal is, and you know, to have a hobby doing painting or whatever, doing printmaking. Um, and most difficult piece would probably be uh, hmm, doing sculpture. The, the wood, uh, the ladies' bust I have downstairs out in the hall. Uh, I had some time because I had to worry about uh, it, it's got a, a dead spot in the center going all the way through, and I had to really uh, concern about you know uh, aesthetics well along with uh, uh, content and. Uh, I had to be more concerned about not puncturing, going all the way through the dead spot, and trying to get a good shape and form out of the uh, piece of wood that I had, which is an old cedar stump, which had a lot of knots, and and I really had a good, a real tough time getting it to where I wanted to to fit. But I'm glad to, it came out the way it did. The quality of the senior exhibit, I'm I'm really pleased with the. Uh, the results that came out of the students. Uh, I've been here uh, four, four and a half years, and I've worked with a lot of these students day in and day out. And you know, some of us have a lot of, you know, stuff that, you know, didn't work. And a lot of the stuff that did work just didn't get entered. But overall, I think the pieces in the gallery really, really, truly represents the quality of what Vital State Art Department can produce. You know, there, there, there's a few that, you know, everybody has a talent that's more developed than others, and others have different talents that are, you know, just based on their personality. Uh, overall, I think, uh, you know, seeing as how we had 18 uh, senior graduating students, I think the diversity has really uh, enhanced uh, Valley State's Art Department Gallery because some shows that come in here, I, I truly think, you know, they're sort of lacking in some certain areas, whether it be uh, my personal taste or aesthetics or just uh, work in general or the media. But uh, I, I really am pleased with all the uh, uh, VSU art students. I'm pretty sure that a lot of them is going to go out and make a good, good name for themselves. And, Noon, officer. It's my license and registration.
cheeseburger? It's hot out today, huh, officer? Maybe my tail lights out. Shouldn't or... you be carpooling? I guess you're right. I guess I am. Carpooling can save up to 600,000 gallons of gas a year. This message sponsored by Ad Council and Earthshare. There's an awesome power that can eliminate over half of our nation's defense forces. It's everywhere, and it can strike at any time. Who has this incredible power? You do. If you employ National Guard and Reserve members, you need to use your power wisely, because today, the Guard and Reserve make up over half of our country's defense. So when they need time off to serve, be a hero. Give them the freedom to protect ours. Hello, my name is Marlon Hurd. I'm a senior art major here at Boston State University. I'm here to discuss with you the senior art exhibit, which is on exhibit now at the VSU Gallery. Um, I would like to talk about my work. I have four pieces which are in the gallery. Um, chair one, chair three, chili pepper, and kitchen sink. Um, two of them are paintings. Uh, the other two are mixed media sculpture. Um, Chili pepper is, it was done in an intermediate, I mean in a beginning sculpture class. It's out of cedar and copper piping. It was done, it's, it's a fun piece that, and I'm very happy about it being in the exhibition. It's one of the pieces that I'd say that I'm most proud of since I've been here at VSU. Uh, it's a relatively small piece, but it's something that my artwork a lot of times relates to, well, in this instance, it, it, it related to something just, just fun. And I, and I like to get away from um, subjects that are maybe heavy. Uh, uh, a lot of my work tends to be about emotion. And I guess, you know, this, this chili pepper is it's about emotion. It's about, you know, just being happy and, and playful. And I had a good time with it. And, and I would say all the pieces that are in the gallery are works that I'm extremely happy with and with whatever context they relate to. Um, the majority of my work is about emotion. And, um, but so far as the chili pepper goes, it, it is, I would say, just a, a playful, fun piece that I enjoy doing very much. But I'd, I'd have to say that my favorite would be the chair three, which is also in the exhibit. It's a um, painting that I did in a mixed technical painting class here at Valdosta State under uh, Professor Harry Alley. Um, that quarter I began to experiment with glossy enamels and with color, which was a new direction for me because most of my paintings up until that point had dealt with uh, muted, toned down color, um, very subtle, very uh, minimalist, which Chair 3 is still a, a fairly minimalist piece. Um, I deal a lot with geometric shapes. Um, it didn't start out to be a chair per se. Um, it originally, when I paint, I go into a painting, I don't want to go into it with any preconceived ideas or any preconceived notions. I go into a painting and kind of let the paint do the work. I put paint on a canvas and whatever happens, happens. Um, it's a very frustrating process because um, I guess pretty much your guard is down. You, you go into it and when, when you don't have any ideas like that, people may think that that's real easy to do, but it isn't. I mean, that's extremely hard to do because I don't know, it's a search. You're searching for something and it's, a lot of times it's very hard to find that element that will inspire you to, um, well, that, that inspires the work. That's the basis for the work and that that's when it's the most fun. That's when uh, yeah, it's just a feeling you get, you know the work is on its way. Billy wants to work on airplanes someday, maybe one that you fly in. Now, would you like to call for this free booklet of simple ways to improve his education? There's an awesome power that can eliminate over half of our nation's defense forces. It's everywhere, and it can strike at any time. Who has this incredible power? You do. 
If you employ National Guard and Reserve members, you need to use your power wisely, because today, the Guard and Reserve make up over half of our country's defense. So when they need time off to serve, be a hero. Give them the freedom to protect ours. Thousands of women will lose a child to AIDS simply because they didn't get an HIV test when they were pregnant. You see, there's now treatment that can help stop the spread of HIV from mother to baby, which gives children of HIV-infected mothers something they never had before, a chance. <laughs> if you're pregnant, please get an HIV test. It's only a little motor oil. What difference is one drop of paint going to make? This much fertilizer isn't going to pollute anything. You're looking at a sea of excuses, created drop by drop by people like you and me. Our waters can be saved if each of us does their part. Drop by drop. If we all do a little, we can do a lot. Brought to you by the Natural Resources Defense Council, the EPA, and the Ad Councils of the U.S. and Japan. Hi, my name is Milton Johnson, and I'm from Tifton, Georgia. I'd like to talk to you today a little bit about some of the sculpture and paintings that I have in the uh, senior exhibition here at Valdosta State. Um, my primary piece that I've worked on that I, I think I have the most uh, pride in has to be my sculpture piece that I've done out of marble, uh, mainly because I took a slap in the face, I guess you could say, from my instructor who uh, said if you have the nerve to do it or the courage to do it, you know, you can have this piece of marble sitting outside. Uh, I remember the first day that we decided to move it to put it on the uh, podium where I could work on it, and it took four people to move that stone to that podium that was so heavy. And uh, I, once I got to working on the stone, I was, my primary goal was I wanted to do uh, a representational figure uh, to test my skill against the older masters like Michelangelo. And uh, so I, I started working on my figure and I got about halfway through the quarter and I was still having some problems agreeing with what I was seeing with my figure. And I didn't realize at the time but I was having other visions of what the stone should be in my head while I was working. And uh, I've always been told that the object is in the stone, you just have to find it, what you're looking for. So I, I um, when I got about halfway through with the first piece uh, that I was working, you know, first image that I was working on with the stone, uh, a part of it broke off from where the stone had a fracture in it. And uh, so I, I pondered over it for a day or two what I was going to try to do, you know, and try to, <clears throat> excuse me, how to fix the stone. So I, I noticed that the image that I was seeing in my head would fit directly into what broke and it was beginning to fall into place and so within it took me about five weeks to get build up to what I had already previously started but it took me about two days to, on a weekend to carve out what I saw in my head the second time what I actually wanted the stone to be and everything just flowed <clears throat> excuse me into place just unbelievably flooded into place and uh, I couldn't I was amazed at how easy it was after that and then as it turned out it really fit a lot of the style of things that I had been working on in painting and other things at the time because it was showing a contradiction in elements you were seeing this stone this marble stone that it was a Georgia stone but it was also the second hardest piece of marble in the state of Georgia in the, in the world, there's only one other uh, marble stone that hard that you can find in the world. And uh, the, the contradiction was that the stone being so hard coming out to look so fluid and delicate and smooth. And there's some places on it, if you look real close, you can even see through it. And uh, it was, uh, I was really proud to see that, I'd, you know, uh, achieve the challenge, you know, that had been put before me. And uh, I think that, uh, uh, it's changed my perception about sculpture quite a bit because before that I didn't have a real uh, desire to do it. It was something that I wanted to do just to prove to myself that I could do it just along beside other 
people. And I got to thinking about the element of realism and with the sculpture and the challenge of that versus the new forms and things that are done now with abstraction of the figures and stuff. And I, I actually believe that it's more of a challenge than doing the representational work because you don't have a direct reference to go by the whole time. What you see comple completely comes from your imagination and is pulled together by your understanding of the art elements that you are, you know, trained to do. And it's a, it's a kind of a, a, a reference to, you know, things that I worked on in the past, and using that contradiction of two things, you know, not, you know, it's not always what you get, you know, from what you're seeing. So that's basically, uh, it's, it's also very similar to my sculpture, how things seem to go in cycles. You test a lot of things, you work a lot of, in a lot of different areas, you sometimes find yourself uh, just working mindlessly, that you don't understand why you're doing something, you just have a direction that you're going in. Even your professors at times, you know, they, they enjoy, for you, enjoy the fact that you experiment and test new things, but the real challenge is when it comes back to a head and you actually make a solid series off of that that combines everything that you've done to that point. And that's how you grow, you grow in steps. You know, you, you take a step to, to experiment and, and learn new ways and you take another step to produce work that is solid with those new ideas that you've, you've come up with. Uh, I think that the uh, my, my time that I've been here at uh, Valdosta State, I, I believe I've been really impressed with the instructors and, and because a lot of them have been exhibiting work and, and are nationally known for uh, the elements that they produce. Uh, I think that carries over really well into the classroom because they're bringing a lot of that experience that they've uh, achieved to you and your, your work because when you sit down for critique, you have some sort of reference that you know they know what they're talking about when they say there's a problem with something that you're doing because you can see it in their work and you understand that the level that you're trying to achieve they're already there or they've been to that level and you see the reference point that you're trying to get to uh, and it's a uh, it's just a I guess a reassuring uh, element to know that you know they they are bringing that uh, experience to you in the classroom I've been real impressed uh, comparing the work that I produced to other schools uh, because I originally felt like I wanted to go to the University of Georgia to school but when they declared university status down here I decided to go here for school and at the time I was concerned about how well it would compare to the University of Georgia a school that size but I don't think I would have gotten the the one-on-one uh, -on -one attention and the pushing from other instructors uh, pretty much uh, making the classroom a setting to where you're extremely competitive with other students. I, I think that the students that are coming in are getting more and more competitive every year and it, it, I've noticed that from my last year here it was tougher to get to, you know, to outweigh them in a critique, you know, and to be a step ahead you know, you're not only competing with yourself, but you're gonna have to compete with those people when you get out in the job market as well. And so that's helped quite a bit, you know, being in that tough surrounding, because I can remember when I first got here, critiques were, you know, you'd spend two hours in class critiquing uh, work, and something that somebody did was challenging at a certain point, and you'd spend two hours outside of class arguing about it too, and then, you know, the the instructor seemed to throw fuel on the fire to see just how much you wanted it, you know. So it was a, and I think that we all learn from that because I think we've all grown through it and we all challenge, you know, what we're doing now, trying to push ahead instead of being just stale and dry.